Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today I'm actually going to be uninstalling my eBay coilovers and I'm going to be working on installing some Silver's Neomax coilovers. Now the eBay coilovers were okay, but they just weren't the best. So to give you an idea, the eBay coilovers, after driving with them for about 2-3 weeks, I started to get a little irritated with them. They are great on a flat surface, okay, don't get me wrong. They absorb some bumps pretty good. But I live on back roads, and anytime I hit like a steep bump or I hit a pothole or anything, the car, the whole car just bounces, uh, and it's so soft, it's too soft. So when you go into a corner, the whole car rolls almost as bad, maybe worse than factory. And obviously, I can't lower the car anymore because there's so much travel that I'm actually higher. My car is actually sitting higher than it was with the lowering springs, but I'm rubbing more. So every time I'm hitting a bump, the whole body of the car is just dropping down, hitting the tires, and rubbing like crazy. So I want a stiffer ride, I want something more sporty, and I'm hoping these do the trick. Let's go ahead and get these unboxed, check out what it looks like. Alright, we got a silver sticker, our adjustment tools, here's the rear. I like that they're silver and black. That's a really good color for me. I didn't like the green of the uh, the Rev 9 coilovers that I got on eBay. The top hats of those, I actually painted because they were green and it was just kind of an eyesore to the engine bay. Whereas seeing the silver top hats, I think would look good. You have your camber adjustment, you have your dampening adjustment. They actually protected all of these studs with caps. Like, I don't know. I've only ever bought cheap suspension parts, so this looks really nice. We're going to start tearing this thing apart and putting these on. The nice thing about this is they come out of the box preloaded. You don't have to adjust them. A lot of coilovers I was looking at, they say to reset the preload. These are already preloaded. You just throw them on. And all you got to do to adjust the height is move the bottom. Move the bottom ring, spin the bottom. You don't have to touch the top part at all. They're all set exactly the same. So you don't have to sacrifice the spring rate to change your ride height. For this car, they offer a super low kit. And so... If this isn't low enough for you, you can get the super low kit, and I believe that one drops like almost twice what this one does. I don't want to do that. I'm rubbing as it is, so I don't need to go super low, but that's always an option for you too there. Um, and maybe for me down the road, if I end up changing up things at all, I can always go with the super low kit. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to put these in the car, and I'm not going to adjust anything. I can just readjust them if... I need to so I'm gonna put them in at the height they're at and if it's too high or too low I can always take the wheel off and readjust all right so it looks like after sitting it down I'm sitting just about the same height I was before which is good I'm not trying to be super low it's still lower than stock, at least I think. <laughs> All I'm doing is just double tightening these. I forgot to show you me doing this on the front. I'm not adjusting the preload or anything. I'm just making sure these are tight and that they're not going to go anywhere. So I adjusted it quite a bit and we're still way lower than what I want to be. I mean, I'm, that's just stupid low. So I don't know why anyone would need the super low option because 
I still have that many threads to go. I've extended it. Uh, I extended and added like over a half an inch of threads. All right, so I adjusted it a little bit more. It's a little more reasonable now. It's still lower than what I had it before. This can be stiffened up to where it doesn't have a lot of travel. You know, I, I should be okay. So that's what we're gonna do. This has 24 levels, I believe, of dampening, whereas those had uh, 12, if you wanna even consider it that. But what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to, it might've been 16, 12 or 16, but either way, I don't think they adjusted anything. What I'm gonna do, 24 levels of dampening. I'm gonna make it as stiff as they'll go and then pull it back like four notches. I don't want it to be completely maxed out, but I want a stiff ride. I want it to handle good in the corners and those certainly did not do that. So I actually cut out this little spot since this rubber piece covers it and I'm gonna eventually put a strut bar back here anyway. So here is our dampener. We're gonna crank it all the way to hard. All right, we're maxed out, four clicks back. One, two, three, four. I really like how audible and how much you can feel the clicks. In those, I had no idea where I was at. There was some micro clicks, but they weren't full clicks. It was really weird. So I'm gonna do that to the front and back, and then we're gonna test this thing out. See how this does. So I actually did already drive it before I changed the stiffness just down to the end of this road at my house to see if it would rub how low it was sitting in the back. And it did rub and it was nice and soft. Wherever they were set from factory was like perfect. It felt like stock. So now I have them as stiff as they go. I can immediately tell they're stiffer, which is pretty cool. I feel it. I definitely feel it, which I didn't with the other ones. All right. I call this the road of death because it will just shred your car apart. So here's the first test. The road to my house is just ridiculous. So we'll see how these fare. Like I said, I, I adjusted the back. I think there was about two and a quarter inches of thread showing. I still had room to go if I wanted to raise it, but uh, there's a little rub. But you can tell, I'm gonna speed a little bit. It floats over the bumps. Uh, yeah, I'm gonna have to lift the back just a little bit more. But before I would hit a bump and it would like, it, it hit like that same bump that I just hit and had that one little like rub, it would smack back down on the tire about three times. So now I'm gonna see how this thing handles around the corners because that was my big gripe with the other ones. Oh yeah. That's how it's supposed to feel. Do a U-turn right here and see. <laughs> God, these tires suck. But the car isn't rolling at all. And I don't have any sway bar upgrades or anything. This is just coilovers and a front strut bar. That's so much better. So it essentially gave me the feeling of my stiffness around the corners back from my lowering springs, but the comfort of like a stock strut, it really feels great. Like if you're driving it in a normal straight line, you're not being aggressive, it feels like it's on stock suspension. This is really good. It's just floating over the bumps. I did not think it was gonna do that at all. I'm going to be 100% honest. I did not think it was going to do that. Look, I, I just got my confidence back. All right, so I got the back up a little bit higher and the front down a little bit lower. The front's still sitting a little high. I could probably still go down on the front, but I'm exhausted. I'll do that another day. All right, guys, so I ended up readjusting the height on the coilovers three full times. So what I was doing was jacking the entire car up, taking off all four wheels, readjusting all four coilovers, putting all four wheels back on, and then taking it for a short drive down the block, turning around, coming back, doing it all again. Three times I did that, very annoying process, but I wanted to get it dialed in exactly how I wanted it. Now I have the height leveled out just about where I want it. It's just barely rubbing on the rear. There's nothing I can really do at this point. I rolled the fender, I trimmed the fender, 
All I could do is take the spacers off and make the fender flares look stupid. Or I could take the fender flares off. That'd solve a lot of problems. Um, so I, I don't know what I'm going to do from here. But it is still rubbing just a little bit in the rear. And I have about the least aggressive tire that I can get. It's decently stretched. I'm just... I don't know. We'll see. Um, but as far as the coilovers, I am beyond impressed. They blew my mind. The fact that they can still stay so flat in the corners, you know, you're you're ripping through a corner and the car just stays flat. It doesn't wash out. It doesn't lean real bad to one side. But then when you drive over bumps and stuff, it's still smooth. That blew my mind because usually you sacrifice one or the other. You either have amazing handling around the corners and then the bumps suck or it absorbs the bumps nicely, but then it sucks in the corners. And this filled both voids very well. Completely blew those out of the water. And like I said, those were, you know, a little under half the price of these. But is it worth paying half the price when I could have just saved up to get these? Not really. Um, so I'll remember that for next time. You know, some parts you just shouldn't cheap out on. I've always been a guy that likes cheaper parts, you know, but... I think those Rev9 coilovers would be okay for a daily driver on flat roads when you're not doing a lot of tracking, you're not on a lot of like bumpy back roads. I think they would do okay. You know, if you're living in the city, they'd be fine. They're just too, they're almost too comfortable, you know, and I say comfortable because I think they try too hard to make the ride smooth and they make it bouncy. The only way I can describe the bounciness is that it feels like you're in the ocean going over waves. Like it just, I mean, it's it's unbearable. It, it makes you feel sick to your stomach. So she's finally got some good coilovers on her. We're making progress with this build. I'm excited for what's next. I'll see you guys soon.